And welcome back, everyone, to the English coverage of the Chinese LPL. What an amazing first game between Snake and OMG to start things off here for our third week of LPL coverage. I'm Julian Pace, I'm Card, joined by Christopher Papa Smithy Smith. And boy, oh boy, did we get a show. It wasn't what I expected at all, Pastry Time, but it was so exciting to have two teams. They understood their comps. They tried to win. And to be honest, I guess the one thing that surprised me the most is that OMG really underestimated their opponents right there. Leaving up those favored champions led to so many problems. They almost wrestled it out in the late game. But I don't think they can repeat that pick ban if they want to escape with any points after this series. Yeah, a really strong early game for Snake. Pretty much propelled Crystal to exactly where he needed to be to win his game fights. And the whole team came together again, lifting the hyper character Astana up for their team. And Snake, when they get their comfort, just like you said, they look almost unbeatable. They do, but it was significant that the first team fight we saw, the first true 5v5 was, what, 45 minutes into the game? That last team fight right there decided the game. It was actually initiated by Loveling, who the whole game was in this unfortunate position of when you're behind on Rengar, of jumping in, putting out a bowler, and then just basically walking out because he couldn't really take any of that frontline damage right there. They initiated a fight. Finally, Snake was able to find some picks, snowballed the victory right there. It was an exciting game with a lot of strategic machinations. I just feel like we're going to see a totally different strategy from OMG coming this time. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the draft. But talking a little bit about the strategy from the last game, really solid early game for Snake. But it feels like they faltered a little bit in the mid game. And OMG, I guess, did the same in the early game. I mean, Snake in the LSPL won a lot of their games through early game snowball. They were all about the early game. They showed masterful early game prowess right there. But late game, especially in kind of a, t a tricky spot where OMG was able to separate their threats and never engage a fight, they didn't have a lot of answers and they would have gleefully accepted that team fight right at the end to finish out the game because it could have gone much longer. All right, we'll have to see here as we get into game two between these two. Snake are up a game here on the blue side as they banned out LeBlanc and Cassidy. OMG on the red side here. Down a game, they've banned out Rek'Sai as their first champion. They're so obviously trying to pigeonhole Cool's picks right here with two mid lane bans. Now Azir's out of the champion pool. A lot of those powerful picks are getting banned. I could even see them first picking Zerith right here if we do see him escape the pick and bans but I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, an injured Barker, I have to say, played really well on that Zerath, as we do have Snake banning out Nara as their third, so lots of respect there to go going. I know OMG doesn't want to ban Zerath, but they're gonna do it. It's a very significant ban. You know that was the last thing they wanted to do. They wanted to smash Barker in that first game and force him to pick that champion again in a bad matchup. They've had to ban it, and this leaves that rumble up for Flandre. It's not the, uh, the, the, the split-pushing solo top we expected from Flandre at the start of the season, but it's been perhaps his most powerful pick on display in the LPL. Yeah, he's played, I think, the most games on Rumble of any champion that he's played so far. And he's got a very good record, maybe even an undefeated record with Rumble at this point. We'd have to check that. But a strong first pick there. And again, going in for a bit more resources action here, or less resources for Flandre. And Jana Jarvan, it's been the red side special both games this series, a lot of the games in the LPL so far. So much power on those two picks. Probably going to be locked in right here. The important thing here is that Snake doesn't get that Rumble Jarvan combination that has been huge in the LPL and throughout the world. Yeah, important to deny that. So John and Jarvan, it is for OMG, the same two picks that Snake did pick up in their first draft in game one. And we'll see what Snake want to go for now as well. Kind of an interesting hover there. There'll be a nice blocker pick for Snake. But again, I like that Flandre feeling confident and just doesn't feel pressured to carry for his team. What, uh, what Snake really did in the first game, rather than focusing on Cool, they focused on Loveling. They actually focused on the featured matchup right there because they actually took Nunu and Jarvan. Of course, we saw uh, Beast completely dismantle Gamti's Jarvan player with Nunu and then do the same from the other side. And when you take away two of those strong junglers, it pigeonholed Loveling into the Rengar, who of course has great power from six, great counter ganking early if you have very good team communication, but can really struggle to get into games. So to opt into Rengar and Tristana in this case is a surprise to me. And that's saying, despite how good Crystal is, they're really having a low impact early game right here. Only really rumble to have any sort of mid-game relevancy in those first three picks. Yep, going in for Rengar Trist, like you mentioned there for Snake. They'll be their second and third. So back to the same champ for Crystal. Again, probably his most played as well in the LPL. And OMG, considering their last few picks now as well, going to swap things around and interestingly go back to the Civet for Uzi and Aurelia there for going in the top. There was the hover for Caitlyn, which of course gives you that early game flavor, but also has the late game carry potential. But they're settling on Civet right here because they've decided to go with Aurelia. And Civet Aurelia, having Aurelia fly around the team fight, it's not not enough that she can phage proc and move very fast natively, but then to add on the hunt, to have so much CC reduction, Irelia is going to be massive this game, 
and it kind of delays Tristana's power spike even further just because she's going to have to use her rocket jump, use her ultimate defensively in a team fight, and still get those resets as we see some more hovers coming out here from Snake. It makes a lot of sense to get a champion that can uh, kind of disrupt Chris a little bit more in team fights, and I think that's what they're going once there on his Aurelia. But these picks are locked in here. Bit of swagger actually for Baka. Picks cool Syndra blind into him, and Thresh there for Ella as well. You never really want to be in that position where you blind pick into Cool. He's got such a wide champion pool, so many champs you could pick. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Ari come out here. That's the Cool special, probably one of his favorite champions. He loves that Ari. Ari versus Syndra skill matchup will be an interesting one. But no, he's going. He's, he's at least hovering over the real answer right here, the assassin off in the mid lane. I mean, you include all the bands here in that pick from Chris, uh, from Baka, sorry. That's five mid lane champions that got taken up before Cool got a chance at his last counter pick here. So they're really saying, you know what? You bet it, Azeroth, fine. We'll pick on you, and it is going to be Fizz there, the last pick for Cool. And, and, and Fizz basically makes it a bit of a pink comp here. It's all about Vision once again coming out here. But the team fight from OMG, if they can get the initiate they're looking for, and of course with Java, and you're usually pretty confident about that, is crazy. And Snake have opted into a really weak mid game, and that's. That's kind of the scary thing for me here. So we've seen that strategy work against a team like World Elite, where they were able to lose the minimum in the mid game, come up at the late game with a huge Tristana and win team fights. We saw how much trouble they had in the previous game with a Fed Tristana, with a Fed Zerath, at finishing out a game just because OMG was so smart about choosing their engagements, about playing, passive, about playing aggressively and splitting the targets. Now to kind of go for an even bigger mid game power trough, unless we see some of the hijinks we saw last game where they managed to get a huge gold uh, injection early, I think Snake are going to struggle here. I'm not entirely convinced that they make games that weak, though, because we've seen Snake do this a lot when they pick Trist. They love comboing with Flandre's Rumble, and the double AP here actually gives them at least a boost through that mid-game, potentially. I mean, there is the, there's always the potential of the Equalizer coming down with a couple of magic penetration items and the resets coming in for Crystal. That's an ideal case. And, of course, Rumble does give them options in terms of team fighting around the Dragon. Of course, you never really want to choose to fight a rumble at the dragon buff, but there's not a lot of pressure coming out of the jungle with the Rengar. I think a lot, again, the featured matchup comes up again. We're going to have to see Rengar go big here. All right, with that, we've got game two coming right up between OMG and Snake. And back onto the rip, ladies and gentlemen, Snake versus OMG for the second time today. Snake is surprisingly up a game here in this best of two, and OMG are going to look to make sure they don't relinquish first place. That was the one thing we may have missed in our pregame. Papa Smithy, this is a battle for first. If Snake can win it, they are the undisputed first place in the LPL. And the only way to truly choose their own destiny here today and not leave it in the hands of that group of teams at, at joint third place is to get the 2-0 victory here. Of course, if they lose this game go 1-1 one, one. they only take a possible one point they will be overtaken by any of the teams at three at, at two wins picking up a third clear 2-0 win right here so it's all on snake to choose their own destiny and they're beginning that very early with this invade yeah we wanted to talk about snake maybe proving themselves against the better teams as well what a statement it would be in the lpl to 2-0 omg who were until this point undefeated in lpl matches absolutely they're the only team that hasn't decisively lost a series here so we see the aggressive wards coming down. It's the OMG standard. They once again have lane wards down. They opted into a 2v1 last time with the Civil lane. So I guess I'm really unclear as to what OMG want from this early level one action. Yeah, and I think Snake again are looking to set things up nicely for Crystal's Trist. But I do like the double AP they got as well. Be interesting to see the early movements again. Snake played the level one fantastically in the first five minutes of that game. It was beautiful to watch from an OMG going to be paying close attention to all these movements as it looks like Loveling's going to start at his blue actually. And uh, over on the other side for Snake. We've almost lost him. Rengar's at his red, so. So I'm going to kind of talk about what I expect to happen this game, particularly with Uzi. Because last game, he went for what has been a really standard play. He's been holding that lane, freezing the wave top, getting solo lane experience, getting access to that on the hunt quickly, and then showing up at team fights with a big buy. I think that was the plan last game, but from all the curveballs Snake sent out, it wasn't a viable strategy for them, and they had to group Uzi early with just a pickaxe for his troubles. And they kind of negated all the extra work they'd done into putting that freeze up top. 
If we don't see those early rotations in this game, I think we're going to see Uzi return to this strategy of just freezing that lane and then really showing up with a huge item lead in the first team fight. Yeah, freeze the starter for Crystal as well. Actually looking to get aggressive and maybe Hooko going in for a bit of poke damage. Vertical jungling will once again be the flavor of this game as well. And Snake will continue to defend the bottom side of the map where Crystal's sitting, trying to farm safely on Trist. And once again, it's this very early jungle follow coming out of Snake. Uh, they haven't elected to put anyone here then. Of course, going in lane very early. For once, doesn't have the defensive wards that we expect when OMG are in a 1v2 situation. We've reliably seen Loveling and indeed Luo go out and put defensive wards to stop a turret dive. But this time, he's all on his own and it uh, could be a turret dive. So is he going to be happy again in towards the top? Looks like lots of people lining up. Going has realized what is wrong here. Although Luo's, co Luo's coming down as well on Janna. Plunder. It looks like it's just going to maybe proxy again, and we might have the fast push go for the second game in a row. It worked so well the first game. Why not try it again? They're not going to get the early kills to really make it easy, but I mean, this feels like some Season 3 League of Legends right here as we see the complete turret XP denial coming out onto GoGoing. I mean, the standard three-and-a-half-minute four-man proxy. Yeah, yeah, you know. Totally normal standard. here. Welcome to the LPL, everyone. Here is Snake. We're going to try and fast push this turret once again. We've got more members of OMG joining them now. Three, actually, here. It's cool still there with Fizz and Bucker. Actually dueling quite nicely. That isolated mid lane giving Cool a bit of the edge there. And what's, I guess, a skill-ish matchup? And I, I just worry that we're going to see Uzi show up at level 6 with Snake, you know, sharing XP among three to four people. Level 6 with a BF sword is going to really set himself up to carry an early game team fight right here. But Snake, they're doubling down right here. They are not interested in allowing go going access to any CS. Loveling are going to go in. Fondre does get out of that though. Beast has used his flash as well. But no early turret here for Snake. That might actually cost them here level 1. Yeah, the XP advantage is definitely in the top lane, but the CS actually very even here. Crystal has been picking up almost all the CS in these three four-man pushes, so it's doing fine in terms of CS. It's just the levels that Uzi's really going to have to show for this. And it seems like, again, a very similar strategy for Snake, but not quite the same amount of success in execution. He's so beast off to his own jungle again. 3v3 down the bottom lane to start off. A pretty interesting lane. Looks like 3v2 now is Kristen Ella. Going to get left alone for now in the bottom lane. Go going. Going to be left to his own devices again. We might see low stick round, although both the jungler and supporter are reconning. And Uzi continuing a long freeze here in the top. One thing that I do like about this early game is that it's basically negated the jungle pressure advantage that Javan will innately have before level 6. Cool takes a lot of damage in the mid lane. Obviously, if you're grouping with a Rengar, he still has access to some AoE wave clear. He's able to put out the same amount of pressure, but you don't have that situation where Javan's you know, having that level 2 ganking spike and going around influencing lanes. The laning phase basically just started now, five minutes into the game. Yeah, and again, Snake are all about getting Crystal going, and OMG seem to be okay. That's an amazing hook on the go going. Plays him back as well. Good awareness of a go going. Blade Surge is off to a minion. Keep himself healthy, and Flandre has joined Uzi in the top lane, but he's level 3. Yeah, watching the top lane. So many members right here. Flandre's going to have to be careful. Loveling going in. No flash. They can't close the distance. And Flandre, again, that intuition, although he did have a ward to spot them off as well, will keep him safe here. And so Rengar, again, he's kind of unmolested in his attempts to get to level 6 right here. Only level 3, but he'll keep getting experience. And finally, we have Crystal getting the solo lane farm in the bottom lane. And go going. He's gleefully accepting the XP in last hits. Of course, he has 13 CS to 6, but a lot more item intensive is this Aurelia compared to Flandre's Rumble. And I love this change up here. Is OMG actually going to look to go in for maybe a dive? Flandre could be in trouble. Looks like Beast is actually off to the side as well. And maybe now OMG rethink their turret dive. Yeah, it's 3v2. They're going to go in for it. Or at least get some pressure down. Uzi's in there as well. Flandre and Beast rotating in to clear out some waves. Loveland going in. Just needed to get to the other side and does do so as Beast and Flandre will farm up as much CS as they can under this turret. And you can see why OMG were considering their options right there. Level 6 already was a Sivir against two level threes, obviously being the sum of two people's levels. Not something you see so often in League of Legends, barring the level two action. And again, despite the fast push not working nearly as well this game as it did in game one, I love that they've realized that, you know what, if they're going to leave Uzi alone, we're going to leave Crystal alone. And so a name we didn't actually call out very often in the first game was Cool. Like cool had not much impact in that first game right here. We were praising Barker's razor sharp skill shots. Important to note that Cool is 5 CS up in a melee versus Syndra matchup. And Fizz versus Syndra changes a lot at level 6, but it's quite painful at the early levels. It's down bottom. We see a little bit of love taps coming between the, uh, at this point, bottom laners. Yeah, great spell shield there by Uzi as well. Dodging the hook out there from Ella, who has rotated in towards the top lane. Level 6 is in the mid lane for both as well. And we've got quite the party here in the top lane, actually. Looks like 2v2, actually, but not the 2v2 lanes we expect. And again, Crystal has to be happy with the free farm. Yeah, Flandre is going to get experience. But the thing is here, 
Rumble actually scales off levels better than he does off items. So actually having a second member in this lane, having the Thresh soaking up experience, is not ideal for Snake whatsoever. Of course, it stops the time when they can realistically fight for that dragon just because, again, it's the equalizer that makes Rumble such a, champ uh, such a relevant champion at a dragon fight. And it's going to be delayed to what? At least probably the 10-minute mark at this point. Yeah, credit to Lovelings pressure there as well. Kind of keeping Snake scared in the top lane and kind of forcing them to have Elo there just to clear out minions, if nothing else, as well with the Fast push now coming in from Uzi and Lo. And to, to me, this doubles down on the late game focus of Snake just because their mid game came through almost exclusively Rumble. To some extent, Beast hitting level 6 and impacting lanes, but mostly their team fighting is about Rumble and then waiting till Trist hits that power spike late. At this point, OMG are happy to give Snake and specifically Crystal the side lane solo lane here just because although that does let Trist scale up faster, we're still talking 25, 30 minutes into the game. Not that Rumble having Equalizer at the five, six minute mark. Yep. Uh, Bucket did use his ultimate, by the way, in the mid lane. Just uh, tried to burn a bit of harass on Cool. He's actually down towards the bottom side of the map. Now, Bucket got his blue. Cool with the same. And Crystal has to be very careful. Cool will back away, though. Just looking to get some wards done. Does ward up the Krugs. He's going to wander his way back to mid lane. Find his pink ward on his way as well. And take that out for his trouble. And we talked about how OMG loved to give that defensive vision for Go Going. And this time, it's actually Cool is the person who's able to go down there and put it down for them. Go Going is set up to succeed this game after really struggling last game. Both solo lanes. How often have we said... Both solo lanes were one of the main weaknesses in an OMG loss, but they really struggled, and it was all about Crystal. Yeah, Uzi's still getting a lot of CS here as well. Up about six or so on uh, Crystal right now. It's Flandre getting close to the level six, probably about halfway there at this particular point. And cool, we're going to get around and roam as well, potentially here. Level eight with a blue buff here on Fizz, a very happy spot for the mid laner. I think the mindset for Snake is going to be betrayed by the next item purchase for Crystal. I feel like if he opts in, for the early shiv, they're still trying to be team fight relevant in the mid game. But if he goes BF Sword and they go for the Infinity Edge, that greedier item choice right there, delaying the power spike of Tristana, that'll suggest to me that Snake are basically putting their hands up and saying, OMG, you do what you want, and we're going to be big in the late game. Crystal is still behind in CS, by the way. Uzi has continually kept ahead of him, despite basically two different free farm situations in these games as Beast and Bucker now looking to maybe tie down Cool for their first blood of this game. Cool pretty slippery though on this fish and should be just fine here on Fizz. Dramatically different game, the second game right here. Use the Fable Tricks for the Flandre reporting in. That's a good ball there from Beast, but Teleport's also coming through. Beast flashes out with the fish, but Baka gets the kill with his ultimate. Go going to will answer there onto Rengar as Flandre gonna try and turn around. Does already use his ultimate, lovely in trouble. Actually gets flashed off order, but Lowe's here for the kill. Now Baka in a whole host of trouble. Equilibrium strike down for Aurelia and there's another kill. Flandre was over aggressive, trying to get a trade kill right there. Thought he could buy time for Barker to back away. He couldn't. Three for one is the trade right there for OMG. They're going to pick up Dragon. And this game, totally different to the first. Yeah, Snake, for all the strong early game presence they had before, this is not going to plan at all. And we talk about, again, them playing around Crystal a lot. He's going to have a lot of farming to do in this game. When you have an aggressive team making successful early game moves, you're going to be very quick to compliment them and say decisive play. When you try the same thing, it doesn't come off against a practice and experienced team like OMG. The result could be really painful. And we've credited Flandre so much for aggressive teleport usage. Never mind, there's a replay of that last Yeah, we fight. see the replay here. The bowler does hit onto Cool, and it looked like Beast was over-aggressive and turret dangling the turret. They do pick up the first blood here, but Loveling's still going to engage on it. Of course, we're going to cut away there as we see a kill on the bot lane. Crystal very important. Gets a kill. Uzi flayed back as well. Exhaust now down, but the hook does go wide there. Is now Uzi going to cut it with his ult. Crystal pops heal, actually, to try and get further forward and do some more damage. But Uzi does get away. Summon a spell intact also. I think Crystal really wanted to pick up a couple of crits there and then really commit to the turret dive. Was hoping for that with the use of the heal. Didn't pick it up, so they have to back away. They'll take the kill, though. Yeah, I mean, Crystal, again, off to the best start of anyone on his team. He's getting all the gold as Beast actually coming on to go going for in trouble, he's going in to chase him out. Flash forward there, the ultimates are out though, and Beast is now trying to do the damage. Flandre is desperately kiting, but Beast now going to get aggressed on. Flandre turns around, looks for the flame spitter damage. Does go in there, Buck has rotated in as well, and Flandre picks up the kill. Go going did so much right there, but Lovelings come in too. He's come back now, Beast is here, but Buck takes him out. Cool now is looking. He really wants to fish one or two people, but can't find the line for the ulti, and Snake get away with two kills. So that kind of changed the game on its head, Patience.
Fish Town. I was ready to say OMG had the ascendancy in the mid game here, but they're actually ahead in kill now. A snake was very smart trading of damage right there. You would have felt so bad if you were go going because you were so close to the glorious double kill. Shades of PDD's rumble many years past coming out right there, but the result is just two deaths. And Crystal so aggressive, jumps forward towards low to try and get damage done, taking out wards now, defending the pink ward with his life. And the kills, most importantly, go over to multiple members on Snake. So it's not just Crystal now. It's got a bit of mid-game gulp. Everyone now has at least one kill. And I've learned not to question Crystal's aggression on those rocket jumps. I mean, we saw Uzi at the World Championships, of course, and people were just so impressed with his aggressive use of that ability right here. Very similar flavor from Crystal as we see, of course. The hook goes wide. Really nice hook there, but Beast is down here as well. Crystal gonna go in. Beast on top low with a good ulti. You know, trying to reset, but Crystal going straight back in, gets smited there by Loveling. Forced to flash out. Cataclysm though will get him the kill, and Uzi gonna get Buster shot back, but Beast now trapped in the Cataclysm. That's a good hook there for Ella. Flay not gonna follow quite through yet, and Bucker nowhere to really get. Does stun up Loveling. Cools down here as well though, and OMG pick up much needed kills as Ella forced to dodge a fish. The dive comes in though. Ella plays them back. Does look on the cool, but Uzi gets that kill. And sometimes as a caster, you have to eat your words, pastry timers. That time he jumped straight into his death and of course sealed the fate of two of his team members right there. It feels like both teams are taking turns, throwing the aggression down, taking hits, then regrouping, going for another aggressive, and right, right now, it goes towards OMG once again. Blundra going in, actually pops the ulti down, go going, he has to be careful, but he's doing a lot of damage on this Aurelia. Flavors in the comes in, Flandre won't get the solo killer to go going. Can't quite get it done, the silence hurting him there with the overheat. And meanwhile, on the bottom, a love thing escapes with about 200 health himself. The directed camera view I had just couldn't decide what to show. There was so much action happening in this game. And that's a good way to sum up this game. So much action in the first 14 minutes already. These two teams are going blow for blow. Let's see the bottom line. So we though. see the replay. It's a very smart play right there. But Beast gets hit out by the excellent Jana ult right here. And that, for once, jumping in for Crystal seals his death right here. Three members of OMG, free DPS on Beast. Obviously not that tanky on the early game, Rengar right here. And although Baka was the first to react right here, his only option is to leave Ella to his death. Because look at this. There was a zoning fish to some degree. He didn't want to pick that up but he still died. Yeah, Baka no ultimate crucially there when he rotated down, and beautiful timing by Loveling for the counter gank as well. So OMG more on the board now, six to four in kills in this game, one up in, one zero up in turrets as well, uh, OMG, and that's about 1,500 gold or so ahead, as I believe the first dragon went to them also. And I feel like the vision advantage you can see on the minimap really shows how in the ascendancy OMG are, just because they have smart defensive wards on their own red buff, and also aggressive wards on the enemy's red buff, and any rotations they do on their side of the map. So they're really setting up to take advantage of the power trough coming in the mid game. And I talked about this Tristana item build right here. It's not going to be the static shiv. It's not doubling down on the mid game Tristana. He's just setting up for late, but that means 10 minutes of pain or more coming in from OMG. Yeah, Snake, know that it's not the start they got in game one here for their Tristana. So Crystal has to dig deep and go farming pretty heavily in this game if they want to look to get to that strong late game position that they were in that won them the first game as well. But OMG are playing with even more aggression in this particular game. And with this Siva pick, with one out of tarot down, you know that their 20 minute goal right here is okay. We're going to take this next dragon and let's knock out all those out of turrets and start doubling down this ward because they have no interest in letting Crystal free farm for another 10 to 15 minutes of this game. Yeah, cool is so aggressive. We're actually going to go in 1v3, looking for the fish, doesn't get it. Forced to get out, the exhaust comes in, but the Tenona comes in as well. Ella getting low, that's a good double play, but Uzi gets the first kill. Great off from low as well, but Flandre, amazing equalizer there. Low's going to go down first there as Crystal now going to get the resets to hop back in. Uzi's got to be careful now. Flandre going in, there's the next kill, another reset coming in as Buck is trying to chase out, cool, does flash the slow though, and two for one the trade, actually two for two. Lovely flash from Flandre, he effectively cancelled the animation on his rocket, instant rocket, led to another kill right there, very smart play from low to actually come and flank engage as Janna, not really words you usually say very often, but he did very well but it ends up being a two for two even trade. And the big thing from that, it's not the two for two trade, it's the fact that look who's farming freely at the bottom lane after it, it's Crystal. And any time they can buy for this man to farm, sets themselves up to really contest this mid game. Good pressure here in the mid, go going. Very cute, Blade Surges to a minion and will look to apply pressure to this mid lane turret here. Does get defended though by Snake as they roll three people in and OMG posturing very aggressively around this dragon. Crystal has to be so careful. If four members coming down from OMG right here. Crystal, I think you've overstayed, mate. He's in a lot of trouble. Well, Ella's there, but he's maybe a little too far away. Loving going to line it up. The smite comes in first. Beautiful fits. A lantern. Maybe going to go. No, gets cancelled by the ultimate and go going. Picks up that kill. I don't think I've ever seen that interaction. The fish came at the most fortuitous moment possible popped up that whale. 
The death comes in, and look at that. Dragon's up. It's going to be an easy pickup for OMG, but it's all afforded by this vision. They have perfect vision on the red side enemy jungle right here. And look, Snake can't buy a ward ab above their own Raptor camp. Yeah, and a little too aggressive there by Crystal. Too far forward in that lane as OMG will now pick up their second dragon of the game. Bubbling there. Going to slowly but surely be that down. Didn't have a smite, of course. Why would you smite buffs? Hello, Kakao. How are you? Snake in the top lane. They're going to knock down this top tower for themselves. You have to think 5.1 can't come soon enough for these Chinese junglers. They always use that chilling smite in the fight. Show up at a Baron. DPS it down. Whatever. Don't have the secure on it. That charge system can be a massive buff to LPL yeah. play. Very safe dragon there for OMG after getting the kill on Crystal. Good counter push in the mid as well. Going to trade the mid tower for the top tower, which is a trade that OMG now with the outer ring uh, down. Going to be very comfortable. With. Yeah, 1,800 gold, but more importantly, the three outer turrets down for OMG right here. They're doing exactly what their comp needs to do, and they're even buying time for GoGo into farm. I believe it's about two, 300 gold away from Trinity Force. They can group with that power spike right there, and Tristana, look, she's two items away from her main power spike right here. At least the Shiv and the second boots too need to be completed. But she doesn't have the Nunu this game to really skip any of those power troughs in the mid game. It's all about Tristana getting to three of those big AD carry items and Snake losing the minimum before that point. Loveling finding a few too many friends gets followed up. The ultimate gets burned there as well, but Loveling EQ's out and Snake are like, I wish we'd save the ultimate there. Loveling just strolls out casually. Yeah, it was an unnecessary ultimate. I mean, once they remove the front loaded damage on that Rumble ult many moons ago at this point, you can't really free DPS someone down instantly right there. It doesn't work, and now a very important cooldown is down for any sort of engage around this turret. Yeah, clearing out the Trinket Wards, though. Snake grouping up to try and take out this mid lane turret. No OMG, four man strong will look to defend here as well. Crystal going to get involved potentially as well. Decent items right now on Trist. Level 11, not too bad for knocking down turrets. Beast actually in trouble. Does get lanterned down. No, he jumped on the Loveling. Wants to go in the hook. Flying that as well. It's cool. Wants to fish somebody. Finds Ella, who flashes forward. Good split there, though, for Snake. Is Beast now going to get jumped on there as well. Go going. Look to take him out. Does do so. Even throws down the pink ward. Yeah, three pink wards put down just for that engagement to ensure they DPS down Beast. And the traditionally strong points of Snake, mainly their early game and their minion control, are letting them down. Look at these huge waves pushing at both top and bot as OMG rotate to mid, pick up a couple of kills, and looking good. And we mentioned our featured matchup, Beast versus Loveling. Beast had it all under control in game one with the Nunu, but I have to say Loveling, he's taking the cake this game. If you take Beast away from that early pressure jungler, whether it's the Jarvan, whether it's the Nunu, that Rengar is not working out for him at least this game. Yeah, and Loveling's just been pressure city here on Jarvan as well as Flandre will move into the top lane. Leandris has been completed. Flandre loves to get aggressive with those first two items. Almost always completes that Leandris early on on Rumble. And we see a massive damage power spike coming out from Cool here. Goes back, finishes the Lich Bane. Of course, the Merlinomicon has been the favored early game pickup by these Chinese players. Because you have access to so much damage and, of course, a little bit more elusiveness having the cooldown and your playful tricks to a little bit more. It does delay your Zonias and therefore Void, uh, void Staff. But, you know, if you're winning, in a snowball sense, this build is ideal because the damage you can put out consistently in a team fight is huge. Yeah, good going as well. Also picked up a Trinity Force now, probably a minute or two ago. So really strong items coming through for the mid-game Vom G as they will steal away the blue buff. Uzi actually the recipient there of that one, but it's mainly just to deny that from Bacchus Syndra. So it's 800 gold is the lead for Uzi right here. It's cool. He's looking for he's someone. Down Crystal. He's fished him up. Crystal, good buster shot, but cool. Going to go around the Ignite. Will take off, and that's an easy kill for Fizz. Importantly, with the Grievous wounds from the Ignite, dying and using heal right there. That summon is down. The fight's on. Lovely getting a crest on Flandre here as well. Good ultimate actually in the choke point. Bucker gets that first kill, but Flandre will go down. So that's two for one with the pickoff there on Trist as well. Yeah, it was a very smart fight. Oh, is he in trouble? Yeah, that's a great hook there from Ella. Bucker blows him up for the double. People are exploding left and right. That was actually a level 11 flunger. So that was actually doing a lot of damage was that equalizer, but just in no position to capitalize on it and force a team fight. So they're actually quite fortuitous. The Ella comes up big, very nice hook. DPS is down Uzi, and they buy themselves the time to breathe. And every minute that they can breathe, every minute that Crystal can go around, happily pick up some farm and not die, that's a time ticker for OMG because they cannot afford to drag this out to late game. Yeah, so two items done for Crystal. Looking for the ever-important third item as the next dragon is due in about a minute 45. Go going in the top lane, cleaning some minions out here with his teleport ready to go. And this will be a very important dragon. We talk about the third dragon being the one you really want to contest. Snake can't really afford to let it go if they can help it. And it's been interesting to see Cool play this 
Fizz as if he's playing Zed because he's always split pushing. He knows that with this aggressive item build, there's no one on Snake's side that can 1v1 him in this situation. Even two members are in with a shout of him beating in a 1v2 situation. So he's happy to push, creates so much pressure in the bot. And importantly, that bot lane is now no longer a place that Crystal can free farm happily. Usually the bot lane, because it's so far away from other objectives, is free farm city for an AD carry. But Crystal's relegated to picking up Raptors right here. He's not able to gobble up those massive waves crashing onto the box. They just don't have the defensive warding to allow him to go and split push and farm. He's got a minute, so he probably wandered down to clean that up. Uzi here in the meantime, getting some very comfortable creeps here in the mid lane. Two items done for Sivir as well. And ahead in CS a little bit here for Uzi, but not nearly the deficit we saw in game one. No, definitely not. And Sivir, with any sort of gold lead, just doubles down her mid game power. She's going to fall off in the late game. But I guess another factor that we didn't really discuss is that in game one, Uzi had to deal with a Jarvan who basically itemized full armor, and Siva is not a tank buster. She's kind of sat ordering that Jarvan, couldn't ever get through that target, so never really got the DPS on priority targets. There's no one like that on this snake lineup. It could be Rengar in the late game, but he's so far behind, that late game's never going to come. So Siva's going to be big. God, that fish does get crystal. That's actually a lot of damage going, going, going in. The Nikolai's a pump stand, but Uzi takes out Flandre. Loveling low as well. And that's four kills instantly for OMG. Four kills instantly. Beast walks off on zero HP. With all that CDR, you know he's going to fall right here. That was an explosion of damage from OMG. Cool is hunting down the Rengar as well. Beast is trying. Boots oh. and Moby, it's come in. It has ticked in. Cool's like, come on, man. Let me just pick you up. And Beast is like, no, nah, I'm going to waste as much time as possible. But Cool's just going to keep the jungle away from Baron. And that's all that matters now no. for OMG. OMG. Baron is still very high in health right there. They're going to have to be smart with trading, but you know OMG are very practicing right there. The suicide comes out. They've got no smite, but it's not going to be a problem. Should be Baron to OMG. Yeah, I mean, Beast isn't around the steal. He executed to the turret, so didn't give away that goal, but a very early Baron here for OMG, but they secure it with Gusto. Absolutely. From patch 5 onwards, you're not really seeing Barons before about the 28-minute mark, such as the potential to lose a team fight round there. And, uh... The casual soloing of the of the dragon, even throwing out the fish for good LR measure. LR coming in, is he going to steal it? No, Cool does secure the dragon, where well, that was unbelievably close. Cool is uh, Cool's playing a little bit confidently this game, I think I'll say. Yeah, he's got a cool head, that's for sure. There's Bucky here now in the mid lane. Finished up his Zonia's, it's got his uh, Void stuff on the way with a blasting one done as well. Snake definitely have some options here moving through, but OMG just busted through a massive lead here, about 5k ahead. And it feels like Fizz is about a half an item away from really being unassailable in this team fight. He's so close to comboing that 40% CDR with the Zonia's Hourglass. It'll come really soon right here. And Cool's been the difference, and the Soul Lanes in particular. I love this blast from the past from Go Going right here. Trinity Force into Guardian Angel. Sounds like a Season 1 item build, but still so effective, especially 24 minutes into the game. Killing two Aurelius? Good luck with that. I mean, Go Going has one job in this game, and it's to make sure Crystal is as irrelevant as possible in these team fights. And I guess Cool maybe has that job towards Loveling. Narrowly escapes the hook there. Snake going to clear out and try and get defensive vision. Now Flandre going to get dove on. Good flash out. Go going. They've still got the GA going. Now here's low on Uzi. Flandre nowhere to go. Does get knocked up. And Uzi says, thanks, mate. I'll take the gold. I mean, interesting to me, page time, is that's not just one person's job. That is OMG's job this game. There's a reason you see Fizz split push. You see, there's a reason you see so many invasions coming out here. It's cool. Might be in trouble. Let's get jumped on. Beast Berry. Patient pops in there. The ult actually coming through. Cool. Going to go in. Ella does find the hook. Bucket gets the stun as well. And what a great CC chain for that first kill. But Crystal down the bottom gets four men. And Dovin killed by OMG. They finally kill that priority target, but at what cost? They lose one turret here. They're in no position to protect the second one either. Uzi is massive on Siva. They're going to DPS this turret down like it's nothing. And this is the mid game we wanted from OMG here. So much power here in this stage. Snake struggling to push OMG back out of their base. And the first inhib of game two goes down at 26 minutes. And this is feeling more and more like a standard OMG performance right here. After being just so overconfident, cocky even I would suggest of them with their drafting and play in the first game right here. They're just turning on the style. They're showing the power in their picks and they're playing wonderfully. And you said it before, OMG, if there's one place from that first game they needed to step up in, it was probably the solo landers. And Cool is putting on a standard Cool performance at this point, playing with such swagger and such confidence. 4, 2, and 7 with almost 200 CS. Cool, and now with the Rapidons as well. He is he is all OMG's game plan at this point. You know, I thought he'd go for the Zonias there just because it fits the item build, allows him to be a front line. No, he just wants to instantly DPS down people. And with those four instant kills in the last team fight, you know they have absolutely that potential. Yeah, it does help with the split push plan as well for Cool. And Go Going is also... Uh, going here as well. 5 1 and 7 with 140 CS. Flandre, you know, a pretty uh, safe, solid 
uh, resourceless-esque champion, I guess, on Rumble, but he's just not been able to have the impact here. Snake is just getting shut out of big 5v5 teamfights, and Crystal's still struggling for fun. And you can see from their map movement here, every time they see Crystal meet a minion wave, they move three, four members to that wave. Rumble's ha they're happy for Rumble to uh, free farm in the top lane right here. They know that's not going to have a big impact on the late game fights. OMG know that if they group and force Crystal away from creeps, they're going to win this game. Yep, and Crystal does get Lantern back to safety as well. Beast looking aggressively, maybe for a flank there as the tier 2 mid lane turret will get looked at here by OMG. OMG, by the way, got themselves to 9,000 gold ahead. Is that an amazing fish for cool? He doesn't even want to go in there. Just saying, you know what? I don't need this. Ah, uh, the harassment fish. When you have 40% CDR on Fizz, something that we haven't seen until these Morel and Nomicon builds started coming out, you can afford to do that because the cooldown's super short. I believe it's about. 38 cool seconds cooldown or so with 40% CDR. Look, it's already half up. Yeah, it's Baku here and with Crystal will look to defend. Good wave clear here from the Syndra. But go going. I mean, he could dive as well if he wanted with the GA. We've got a quick Aegis done for Loveling now as well. OMG just have all the tools they need in this mid game. And you have to feel they're a Dragon or a Baron buff away from just having go going go in there. Tank the turret. He's got Guardian Angel and they'll try and finish the game off that. Right now, probably a little bit too over-aggressive to dive right here, but 10,000 gold lead. There was never a significant gold lead in the previous game. It was severely just really coming out through objectives. In this case, the gold lead is huge. Yeah, Eclipse does go down. Ella trying to fish for a hook there. Crystal actually going in, beats his pop ulti as well. He's going to try and find someone. Bolo goes wide, though. Don't really want Go going, so they'll back off here. But OMG just wait out the ultimates, and they'll come right back in. And it just feels like a repeat of the previous game when we discussed this Rengar. In both games, Rengars have kind of looked to engage and then realized, oh, I, my team doesn't have any business fighting right here. I've got to back away instantly. Yeah, Uzi as well. It's massive on the Civ 6. 2 and 7 is Go going. Because he uses his ulti. Pops the ulti there as well. OMG going to go in, Go going. We're going to dive in on the back. Finds the blade to the minion. Lovely dives in there as well. And there's so much damage here. But Fondre gets the first kill. Cool now diving into the back as well. There's the next kill on the beast. Go going. Love it. Crystal firing from the back lines. Is getting in the damage. With Go going. He is so tanky right now. Heal popped aggressively by Uzi. But the GA does get popped. Cool now. Low as well though. Uzi coming through. Gets the triple. Can he actually find it? No, he doesn't quite go in for the Penta. He wants it though so bad. Crystal getting locked out. Uzi! Oh my god! Crystal with the double! Does go down to go going though. 5 for 3 the trade. Crystal almost pulls off the heroic 1v3, 1v4 action right there, but it's not enough. They'll lose an objective right here. It's that inhibitor going down for them. And Crystal, look, she wasn't even the focus in that fight, was that Tristana? But she just can't handle it just because her front line dies instantly. I don't think Crystal had last Whisper for that team fight. We might have to watch it if we get a replay at any point to see exactly how that panned out. Uzi as well, he really wanted that pen to kill. It's going to be very interesting to see a replay because that was just such a cluster of a team fight. There were so many low health bars, abilities going off left, right, and center. The only really thing you can take away from that team fight is that what's a Tristana to do when she has no front line? That's the one consistent. We saw a 400 armor Jarvan in the front line, freely tanking damage from a Siva. That's what Tristana's looking for. But with all these kind of damage off tanks coming out here, the likes of Rumble, the likes of Rengar, it's just not the same for that Tristana. She wasn't able to order. She was zoned by the implied pressure of Aurelia jumping on her, and there was nothing she could do. I mean, credit to Beast here as well. He's actually got a Warmox as his first major item, so he's trying to be the front line that his team needs, but you're right, it's just not quite enough here. And OMG is setting up for their fourth potential Dragon now in the game. It has respawned. Baron is up back again in 25 seconds as well, and Flandre, he's in the wrong neighborhood. Flandre does flash the fish. Cool. Threaded that somehow through the meeting lines, but everyone dives on top. He pops the ulti and the zone. He's cool. Actually, has to be a little bit careful, but cool. No, never mind. Just Urshan strikes through, gets a clean kill. He buys a bit of time, so credit to him for that. But Uzi in the mid lane, oh, he's been caught. Good play from Al, but Uzi gonna turn around and go in. Go going now. Gonna dive back in. Baka does get that next kill, but go gone. He's going so deep now. Crystal's joining in. Beast has to be careful. Tristana trying for the damage. Loveling diving in. They get the kill. That's an amazing knockup as well. And Crystal forced to jump out there. That's four clean kills there for OMG. Crystal's running as fast as he can, but there's four members here from OMG, and he's absolutely dead. Words define me to describe the cataclysm into flag and drag that was pulled off there. The amount of CC that Loveling put out in that team fight is illegal. It was incredible play from him. They capitalized on Uzi being caught by just cleaning up the rest of the members. Are they going to go for this Baron here? They kind of they can't really push in and finish without a ranged AD carry. But OMG, they've got all the options. It just feels like they can choose whichever one they feel like. And Baron is the choice here that they want. They can feel like they secure the dragon whenever they want here and Loveling will start up the Baron. Cool will join him soon as well. Uzi's not even there. You know, their main carry damage dealer. Don't need him. More than happy here with what they've got and that'll be a second Baron now for OMG. And look, he didn't get the hyper carry this game, but Uzi, he looked down. He's got four damage items and even a lazy BF sword on top of all of it. He's only interested in damage this game is Uzi. 
because his front line, once his Guardian Angel comes up in about two minutes, the Java and Irelia front line will not be beaten by Snake. No, no, do you dare pick up their, their second Baron? So here, B's gonna clear out some vision. Maybe Snake can steal a first dragon here, but Uzi, he's gonna go in for the 1v1 again. Pops his ulti, Lantern goes in as well. And Uzi back to bloodthirsty confidence mode. I mean, 800 damage crits. And you know, you just going back to what you said about Beast, you complimented him on the, the Warmogs right here. To me, a Warmogs first item says that he looked down the carries and the damage coming out from OMG and said, look, I got no idea what I can build to change these team fights. I'm just going to go f hedge my bets with flat health. It's not that useful when you're taking 800, 900 damage crits from Uzi. No, fourth dragon in a row there for OMG as well. Snake have been starved of objectives this game. And Crystal, he's gotten to the point where he can start being relevant. Now basically has his three core damage item plus a vamp set. So that's the best jumping off point for Tristana. But they're so far behind in this game. And OMG are just closing the trap. Of course, the fourth damage item will bring a tear to the eyes of anyone playing on the live service right now. As DFG is picked up on Fizz right here. Who needs a Zonia's when you have just an ungodly amount of AP and burst? damage. That is so much damage and Cool's ultimates have been on point. He has somehow led them through caster creeps like I just can't believe here and Cool, we've said it, the soul lane is needed to step out for OMG here in this game and both Gogong and Cool and let's face it Uzi as well have been playing fantastically. This is the trinity that we love to see as Lovelin might go in here. Beast actually a little too far forward. Uzi gonna get jumped on ultimate there. Great for Blundre. Good side there to Uzi as well but everyone dives in. Crystal gets the first kill. Dives out but Cool is right on top of him right now and Crystal's got nowhere to go. Go going picks him up. Baka in trouble there as Go going goes straight on top of him as well. Flandre looking to go back. Ella plays him back as well. He was next to go down here as Cool gets that next kill. Now Flandre will likely get picked up here. The Baron creeps might kill him before the rest of OMG can. Does pop the shield to run away. He's gonna make an, a run for here as Flandre but there's nothing left basically the slow from Loveling, Cool gets the last kill, and that might just be it. The full DPS, Uzi gets Zerg down, dies instantly, but it doesn't matter. There's so much damage on the soul laners here. It's all about Cool and Go going. How many times have we said that as an OMG fan, as an OMG commentator? Whenever you see the games, it's usually those soul lanes that carry. It was everybody this game, and OMG win very decisively With in game 20, two. With a 20,000 gold lead in this particular game, OMG cross Snake to take it 1-1. Did look, didn't look great in game one, but boy did they look unstoppable again in game two. And what a way for OMG to finish. That's a, that's a real, hey, hey, before you get too cocky and think you can beat us, here's the real OMG. And it was a tale of two Rengars to some degree. I mean, the Rengar picks really suffered, I think. Anybody that opted into that early game power trough and the big featured jungle matchup really paid for it right here. And this was the Loveling show. He played wonderfully well on that Javan 4 and took the game. And we're going to see a replay just to really get a flavor for what we saw in game two here. So again, already a very sizable gold lead coming out for OMG right here, but we're going to see some really nice plays. So we'll roll the tape right here. And Uzi pops his ultimate right here. They're mostly popping that ultimate to zone them off the turret so they can take it down. But then they're like, all right, let's just freely DPS. And we see so many low health members right here. But watch Cool and the amount of damage he can do. At this point, he had 703 AP. So it doesn't really matter who Uzi's free ordering right here. They take down Barker. And it looked really bad for Crystal, but there's low health members across, and Crystal's still almost a three damage Tristana right here. Blows away the Jano, isn't able to finally kill her though, and they basically just all take turns using their DPS onto the Tristana. Two of them fall, but it doesn't really matter because they get the same result. Yeah, and I think Uzi was just saying, give me the pentakill, that's all I want. I don't care. We're so far ahead that it's so unlikely for us to lose that game. And we talk about OMG being a team when their three carries fire, they go off. That was four carry OMG in full force. Four carry OMG, absolutely. But Snake, I mean, they'll take a lot out of that series. OMG, they'll kind of wonder why they let those picks slip in the first game. We can only speculate that there was that SK Telecom T1K from many moons ago theory of give them the comfort, beat them on their comfort champion and then smash them in game two. They didn't manage the first part, but they certainly blew away Snake in a very impressive game two performance. Well, the feature game delivered today, but we'll be back with more LPL action. 11 best of twos to go on three more today. Stay tuned, we'll be right back.